Well, and the interesting thing too is what we, you know, what we do in, in treatment like that is like, oh, okay, look, there's all this stuff associated with this knee, and you know, maybe I shouldn't go anywhere near that. But what happens if I'm on your shoulder, yeah. and then you know, and suddenly there's there's a communication through the connective tissue, um, the knee starts releasing some of its stuff. Maybe you even replace some of the emotion, mm -hmm. but then it goes and it's gone and it's not part of what you're carrying around anymore. That's one of the things that you, you know then the body can do stuff that it couldn't do before. Hmm. And that's actually one of the crucial aspects of this whole work is, you know, sometimes, because sometimes emotion does come up. Um, you know, so even just when you were talking, I was like, oh yeah, there is a lot of emotion in that yeah. right now, isn't there? <laughs> um, and particularly if something has, has been really traumatic has happened, um, and that's where you start to get into um, what's called a, one of the, it's, it's actually called an energy cyst. Um, which is often associated with emotion in, mm -hmm. in this work, where um, it's like there's been something that happened, and maybe it was traumatic or it has some other sort of power to it. Uh, either there was an emotional power or it was a physical trauma or um, it was significant in some other way, and it stays there in that tissue and you can perceive it. And, um, and it's almost like you perceive it as, as like a, a ball of stuff. Uh, and then there's a question of how you interact with that ball of stuff, whether uh, it seems like the thing that you're supposed to be dealing with or you're not. And, you know, and so that's where you start asking questions with your hands, like, hey, what are, so what happens if I'm over here? You want me here? You know, and then if you get that significance detector, you're like, okay. <laughs> and sometimes you'll get the significance detector and you know you're working on, say, the knee, when you're actually in some other area altogether. Um, because it's such an interconnected network. And the other thing about the connective tissue that's very cool is it's not only interconnected around everything, it is in every single cell because there's these little processes that go from whatever connective tissue is sort of outside of the structure um, into the cells and they connect, it connects with the kind of the equivalent of the connective tissue in the cells which is called the cytoskeleton mm -hmm. and it's um, which is a little it's just like a little scaffolding yeah. and that scaffolding is intimately connected to what's going on on the outside. So it's kind of if you think about how the body works in that way you have this incredible system of communication of how the body can interact with itself um, and how you know you can have a restriction in one area that could have a very strong effect in another area. I, I don't know if I showed you this one before with a connected tissue. Yeah. So. One of the things that can happen, for instance, is if you have, let's, let's say, a restriction in the connective tissue that's up in here, and it's a twist or something, mm -hmm. you can see these little lines that come out. Mm -hmm. Though That actually happens in your body where, you know, you might have a twist here, but the stress lines that are affected can radiate out and can go wherever they want to go. So, um, so that's how you can have, um, you know, a particular spot that you're working on it can actually affect other areas. And plus also, as I say, there's there's a, a tremendous amount of electrical uh, and chemical communication between different mm -hmm. parts of the connective tissue as well. 